Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Lumpus Reptiles, and today we're going to do another, well, breeding update. Today will be rack number four, then later on we'll do like rack number five, and then we'll probably do just like a hodgepodge of everything else. Uh, but let's get to rack four today, and then of course when we're done, we're going to slide over to Patreon and tell you what we're going to do with those, so you get an idea of maybe what's coming your way, maybe what's not coming your way, uh, because you know, that's always a little bit helpful. And so anyway, let's just get right down to it. Obviously, some of these I won't pull out, some of them I will. It depends on what they're doing, how they're looking, uh, if they're breeding, if they're already ovulated, what all's going on. We'll start with this girl here. Oof. Now, this is a very, very big girl. She is one that, as you can see, I may show you one that we have one to show that's. I can't pull that one out. You can see she hasn't ovulated. She's just a nice, big, long snake. She's still putting weight on. I'm hoping she goes a little bit late this year. I'll expect her early. What are we looking at here? Look at that tail wag. Guys, when you're seeing that and you don't have the snake acting aggressively, <laughs> that is a good sign. If I put a male in there right now, she would lock up, she would breed. Um, so all good stuff. However, her boyfriend is somewhere else at the moment. But what are we looking at here? This is a pastel 100% het SK Exantic. She's been proven many times. She's bred for me many years. Uh, I've had her since she was a baby, raised her up from a uh, wee one. She was produced by JD Constriction way back in the day. And she's produced some very, very nice babies for us over the years. And I expect she will hopefully again this year. I probably bought her, golly, I wasn't living here yet. Probably around 13, if I had to guess. So she is getting to be about <laughs> 9, maybe 10 years old. So, uh really cool snake doing really well you know and they can live quite a while when you're breeding them it's probably going to take a little bit off of them but all in all she's doing very very good get in there baby girl come on oh, no don't come back out that's not what i want you to do get in there we'll see if she goes in there maybe where did i put her man if i can find her man i will show you her man uh if he's not busy I'm hoping he's busy, though, to be blunt. Uh, not yet. He's not busy yet. So she's going to go to this guy right here, who is a really, really good-looking male. This is an, uh, well, I shouldn't say an unrelated male. It's slightly related. We didn't produce him, but he also came from JD Constriction's line. There's a spider hiding its head upside down, but he doesn't <laughs> wobble bad. There you go, buddy. He's like, why are you taking me away? So what are we looking at here? So this is a killer zebra bee. Uh, so what we're looking at is a spider pastel, plus it's homozygous pastel, so super pastel, a visual exantic. So if you're counting each gene individually and you're counting the each het, you actually have five genes because it's, I mean, this is the proper way to say it, but two hets kind of make a homozygous, right? I almost said two hets make a homo, but some of you can't handle that. Uh, so... Basically, when we breed this animal, what will happen is it has to pass on pastel, okay, and it has to pass on exantic. So pairing to her, she may pass on pastel, and she may pass on exantic. So we know every baby will be at minimum pastel, het, exantic. Half the babies will be at least, on the odds anyway, a visual pastel exantic. And then you have another shot, about one in four should be actually, yeah, about one in four should be a super pastel exantic. And then you've also got a shot at the super pastel spider exantic. So the odds on this are very, very, very good. I literally have to catch three genes, more or less, to make, get off their dirt, three genes to make a super pastel exantic spider. And that three genes would be catching one copy of pastel from mom one copy of Exantic from mom, and then one copy of Spider from dad. So, very, very good odds, very, very strong pairing, very, very happy with that. And let me put him back to his other girlfriend, which we haven't got to yet, but, oh, we will, we will. So in here, what do we have? We have a, a bell. There'll be a couple of these. Easy, girly. This will be the one that I'll likely be able to show. The other one, is already nested up waiting on eggs so we probably won't show her get dirt off of her if we can um the coconut makes them look so dirty she's a very very nice all white snake 
Now, with when you make a bell using Super Lesser, one thing you will run into is a little bit of bug eyeing. So you can see your eyes are pretty big. It's kind of like having a Disney princess first thing. You get those big oversized eyes. Uh, these happen to be blue as well, which is because she's a blue eyed cystic. However, using Super Lesser gives you one of the whitest of white snakes. There's not much that's going to be more pure white than Super Lesser. You start mixing like things like Mojave in here. You start getting a gray head, uh, things like that. Russo is another one to get you a really, really nice, bright white snake. But for me, this I like Lesser as a single gene better than Russo. Some people are going to freak out about the bug guys. So let's talk about that really quick. It will not pass on to the offspring. Since this is going to pass on one copy of Lesser, right? The bigger eyes will not pass on. All your babies are going to have normal sized eyes. Unless the other parent also has a copy of Lesser and you make some more Super Lessers. Then you kind of got a random shot of a little bit bigger eyes. But they're not bad. They don't hurt them. They don't have anything that's going to cause any problems. Now, as you can see here, a couple things we'll look at here. I do not see any ovulation at all in her yet. So we're still building there. She's been paired to a GHI male. Uh, you are starting to get a little bit of some concave look, which could be a really good sign. If you can kind of see that, I don't know. So we're going to hope she goes for us. Uh, so we'd be making GHI lessers here. So no bells from her. We have our bell clutches elsewhere. But we're looking for GHI lessers to kind of go with the GHI Mojaves. Next up is another super lesser and I can't pull her out. She looks about the same as the other one, actually a little bit more uh, large eyes. The reason I'm not going to pull her out is she's already had her ovulation and she already had her pre shed about hmm, 15 days ago. So give or take. So she's getting close. She's got about two weeks before we're going to see her maybe drop some eggs for us. So I don't really want to mess with her or cause her any problems. She has been paired with our male, our male bumblebee. Uh, the reason for that was, is this is a snake that I haven't had a lot of success in breeding. And we've used some new males with her. So I wanted to kind of say, okay, you bells have been kind of a problem. I wanted to use a male, not so much because he was going to make like awesome combos. I wanted to use a male that I knew was A, fertile, and B, would get the job done. And my best boy for that is probably my bumblebee. So we're looking at like pastel lessers, which we've made a thousand times. Lessers, uh, pastel lesser spiders, uh, spiders, and lesser spiders. So still some cool stuff. You know, uh, you could just even get a past. Yeah, I already said that. But nothing like, oh my goodness, coming out of there. Some of the really nice basic combos. But knowing he would get the job done is why I wanted to do that. And he did. So that'll get her kind of going. And next year I'll probably do something more cool with her. Up next is our original pied female that we got. We got this courtesy of Redneck Reptiles quite a while ago uh, and raised her up. She was not quite breed size when we got her. She's been paired. She's had babies for us. And with her and our male, is our male in there? He's out somewhere. He's out doing some work. Let me see if you can keep that up there, Kurt. I'll check him. Because these guys always make... Yeah, you're kind of tied in there. We're going to leave him be. Always, actually, we'll get to his female later. Always make some really, really cool babies. They always make very, very nice pies with a lot of orange color because they're, they're very different looking pies and the combination of them is just amazing. So they're going to make you some very nice... Uh, single gene pides and that's what we're looking for here will be a clutch of single gene pides take a look at her we'll see where she's at in the process this is something that this time of year i do a whole lot of i usually look at their feed charts and any snake that didn't eat i'll get out get it to calm down a little bit sometimes could take a minute kind of look there at the belly here you know we're seeing some signs of building although i think she did feed for us but i'm not seeing an ovulation yet see what i'm talking about there it's getting a little thick through here, but I'd expect that to be a little higher. When you're looking for an ovulation, one good way to tell that from a poop is location. An ovulation will be that back third of the body. It's behind the stomach, like right about where my hand is on her, uh, but not uh, so far back. It looks like they need to take a poop. So next up will be just a very high girl. You shed too, didn't you? And you made a huge mess in there. That's okay. Get that all out of there at once. Oh, good old sheds. Awesome. This is just a single gene Mojave. So nothing too crazy here. 
Now, we didn't have a, we've had her breed before and had her be successful. Last year, she did not produce for us, so we're trying her again this year. She did the year before. Uh, I think part of that was dealing with getting this facility's room temps right and all that. Die fly. Ah, got it. Yep. Um, and so, what are we doing with her? She's getting paired to a GHI. So again, we want to have those lesser GHIs. We also want to have some Mojave GHIs. And the real reason behind that is because one... Kurt, which one do you think you like better? Lesser. And I like Mojave GHI. So we're going to try to make some of both and compare them side by side as brand new babies and kind of watch them grow just a little bit before we part with them to really get a good decision. Maybe let our Patreon members help have a decision in that. So that's what we're kind of trying to do. So that's why we have that. Get in there, girly. I know it. So this is my original albino female. I probably got her circa 13 or 14, and she already had a little age on her then too. Can I have my hand back? No. So she wasn't a brand new girl. We bred her the very next year, I think, in 15. Uh, so how old is she? Yeah, I'm not real sure. She's probably getting around that eight to 10 years of age too. Another stupid fly. Got it. You're better. Um, and she's going to be used this year to produce more Toffinos. Typically, that's what I've used her for. She makes really nice Toffinos pair with our Toffino male. It's some really nice, they make just good babies together, so I kind of keep doing that pairing. We are going to be working some other stuff into albino things, but for her, since it's just a wonderful baby she makes like that, we just kind of keep it going. And we've raised up other albinos for other projects. You'll see one here in a few. Uh, but let's take a look at her belly. Now, I don't think she's there yet either, but again, this is something we do. She's still feeding for us, so, well, maybe if she'll lo loosen. That's why you can relax. It looks like there's a swell there in the middle, but when she relaxes down, you're not going to see it as much. See that? That's why they can fool you a little bit, and I don't think she's there quite yet. Now, I do have high hopes for her, because most years, she's like clockwork for me. So this next girl up here... Is having just a little bit of retained shed issues we're working her through but she is a really really cool snake she did get most of that off except for like this little spot right here on her back that's yeah, gonna wet paper towel it'll well don't even need to so she's got a little bit right there on her neck too we we'll just have to scrub her down with like a wet paper towel and that should all just kind of come right off uh if we let her run around enough she'd get it so what is she she is a calico blitz she's the original very first calico blitz that we ever know to be made in the world uh, she's raised up she has been proven out she is viable for babies she's made babies i don't think she had any last year but she did the year before that so we're hoping she goes again this year her size is good she's been locked up uh I'll show you her belly but again she's still eating not there yet still very early in the year but look at that belly on these girls just a lot of weird oranges just a really cool looking belly all through you can really so see how crazy the pattern is. You don't usually get a lot of high white in our experience with these so far. Uh, and as we've made some more with the Blitz and the Calico, which is what this is, uh, you know, it's just going to be interesting. So we're really looking forward to seeing more of that. And what is she being paired to this year? A Pastel Spot Nose. So again, we're going to try to really make that pattern crazy in there. And we're hoping for a Spot Nose. Of course, we're hoping for all of them. Spot Nose pastel calico blitz but i really want to see what the spot nose does in that combination so next up here is a really simple snake this is one we produced in house this is a lesser pastel really pretty girl i really really like this snake uh, i've had her since birth obviously we made her here we made that calico blitz here and that's one of the really cool things you know there are certain things when you're a hobby breeder starting out that I think, you know, are irreplaceable. Uh, and they're probably irreplaceable if you're a large breeder, but if you're a large breeder and you go drop, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars and cash in your 401k, or maybe you had that from other stuff, whatever, you know, however you choose to do it, and you buy a lot of them that are already breed ready or whatnot and try to jump in full force, nothing wrong with that. But I don't know if you're gonna get the same joy out of an animal like this that I get, or the calico blitz. And what I mean is when you get to that first generation, which is what these are, these are my first generation babies for the most part that we were born and held back and raised up. And now they're having their own babies 
and you're starting to see these long-term projects pay off uh, and things like our snow project, which are things where we made the hats and we did, you know, man, that is having babies that you made have babies as a hobbyist breeder. Just, it's one of those watershed moments where you just kind of feel like, damn, you're like your first clutch, you're like, damn, I'm actually doing this. Then you, at this point, you're like, holy shit, I'm really, really doing this. So it's just one of those moments that you'll remember, uh, which is pretty awesome. You know, our first one to do that was actually our killer bee. I can still tell you that, which is pretty cool. We'll take a look at her belly. I don't think she's there yet either. As you can see, she's not. She's still feeding. For those of you that are wondering, we're still pretty early in the year. Actually, by this time last year, uh, we were probably, I think we had a one clutch in April laid. So we weren't even having an ovulation yet, maybe one. And we are double digit ovulations already. So it's going really good. Now these next two are paired up. So rather than pull them out, it's going to tell you what we got going on. The next one would be a spider het exanthic and het uh, uh, albino, right? Yes, that's what we're dealing, dealing with there. We have had her proven. We, we produced her. Uh, we also produced the male. It is a sib to sib pairing, so you're going to want to start out crossing out if you buy a couple of them. What we're looking for is we've made snow, we've made albino, we've made exanthic, we've made exanthic spider, we made albino spider. I have never yet made a snow spider, and we're still taking those long odds trying to get that. Because I'll be honest, guys, after we get that, that's kind of a dead end project for us. I mean, what else are you going to do with two double hets? So um, that'll be one of those. Oh, you got any adults for sale? If I ever do part with some adults, these are likely a project I'll part with down the road just because. Once I get what I want, you know, and I'm raising something else up, it'll be one that won't get to keep a rack space down the road. Now, below that is another visual in-house produced albino. And what we're pairing to her is that male pie. That's why I didn't pull them out when I checked them. And so we're looking there for double head albino pies. So what we try to do in our recessive projects is we always have one or two double head or, you know, double recessives we're working on. The first one was snow. And we got that now. We've raised that up a little bit. We're feeling good about that. We're working through Ghost. We have that pairing. That's already obvious. We showed you that a few videos back. So we're working there. So it's time to get some new ones because we're eventually going to hit that true Ghost, right? So what are we working on? We're working on albino pides and also uh, exanthic pides. Those will be the two next ones we're working with to hold back a few double heads and start working that direction. So that is it, guys, for rack number four. Kurt, anything you want to add? Are any questions? No. No questions. So there you go. You guys have seen our breeding plans. And uh, we're looking forward to a really great year. We're going to go over to Patreon and see what we're going to do with now. Thank you guys. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. All their crap YouTube makes me say. Uh, all right. We will catch you all next time.